Alright, so this video is an introduction to parametric equations. Alright, so the definition. Alright, so if f and g are continuous functions of t on some interval, then the set of ordered pairs, the set of points x, y, where x is some function of t and y is some function of t, then that set of points is called a plane curve. Right, plane meaning just in the two-dimensional plane. The x equals f of t and the y equals g of t, those are called parametric equations, and t is called the parameter. An example of um, some parametric equations would look like the following. All right, so we want to sketch the graph of these parametric equations where x equals t plus 2 and y equals t squared. Notice that x is a function of t and y is some function of t. That's all that um, f of t and g of t thing was talking about on the, on the definition. All right, so essentially what we have here are three variables, right? T being the parameter. And a lot of times T can represent, say, time. Right? Time equals zero. This is where we would be for the X, and this is where we would be for the Y. Time equals five. This is where we would be for the X. This is where we would be for the Y and whatnot. So when we're going to uh, sketch this, we're actually going to come up with some ordered pairs to plot. Well, to do that, we're going to use a T-chart. Right? Only our T-chart's going to look more like this like a t-chart on steroids or something. And that's because instead of just having an x and y to worry about, we also have a t to worry about. So we're going to have a t column, an x column, and a y column. And what we're going to do is choose numbers for t, and that's going to tell us what x needs to be and what y needs to be. Follow me? Okay, so let's try it. So let's just start with, oh, I'll just make something up, negative 3. So if t is negative 3, you plug in negative 3 for t, what's your x value? Well, x is negative 1 when t is negative 3, and your y value is 9 when t is negative 3. All right? So the ordered pair would be negative 1, 9. So what happens when t is negative 2? All right, so we're just going to increase here for, for a bit. All right, so x would be 0, and y would be 4. All right, when add t is negative 1, x would be 1 and y would be 1. When t is 0, x is 2, and y is 0. When t is 1, x is, what, 3, and y is 1. Everybody see where these numbers for x and y are coming from, right? All right when t is 2, uh, your x value would be 4, and your y value would also be 4. And when t is 3, then your x value is 5, and your y value is 9. All right, that's, that's good enough for now. All right, if we need more, we'll come back and get some. All right, so now we just go plot the points. You're only plotting the ordered pairs, the x, y's, right? So negative 1 and then 9. is up here somewhere. All right, 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 would be there. 1, 1 would be there. 2, 0, 3, 1, 4, 4 here. And 5, 9 would be up here. And so you get this parabola when you connect the dots. Like such. Now, what the t values tell us, and we can kind of think of, of, of t, whatever the parameter is, typically represents time. So we can just say as, as t is increasing, you go from negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, your ordered pairs go from negative 1, 9 to 0, 4, to 1, 1, there's like an order that your ordered pairs go in, right? And so we're able to denote the direction of our graph when we use uh, parametric equations. We're going to put little arrows on our graph here in a minute to denote the direction that the curve traces as t increases. So we go from negative 1, 9, and then when t is negative 2, it goes to 0, 4. And then when t is negative 1, it goes to 1, 1. Right, so everybody see if you keep doing that, your graph's doing this. It's following along this spot like that. So we're going to put these little arrows like such to say, to indicate the direction the curve 
is going. All right. So the arrowheads there, they indicate the direction that the curve traces as t increases. That's a benefit for using parametric equations. All right, so before we knew where all the ordered pairs would be, you know, when we didn't have the parametric equations, we knew where the ordered pairs would be, but we didn't know when the ordered pairs got there, for example, if t does represent time here. And using parametric equations, that will allow us to see that. All right, so... That's pretty simple, right? Just do a, um, a uh, three column t chart here, increase your values for t, and figure out what your x and y values need to be, then go plot your x and y value ordered pairs, and then um, indicate the direction the curve is traveling uh, with little arrowheads. All right, so another thing that we can do is actually find the rectangular equation if we've got a set of parametric equations. Right? So I've got the same two parametric equations from before. Now in order to find the rectangular equation given two parametric equations, we have to um, eliminate t, That's essentially what it boils down to. And sometimes there are easier ways to do that than others. For example, in this case, we can see that it'd be easy to isolate t here. Right? So x minus 2 is equal to t. Right? So you take one of the equations and isolate t. And then we're literally going to substitute this x minus 2 in for t into this other equation. Right? So y equals x minus 2 squared. And that is our rectangular equation, what we were playing with before when we were playing with all the conics. And everybody agreed that if you graph this, this would be a parabola shift of two, to two units to the right. In fact, it would look just like this parabola without the arrows. All right, so does that make sense? All right, so to find the rectangular equation, you take one of the equations, isolate t, and then substitute that into the other equation for t, because your goal is to eliminate t. Let's, let's try one more. If x equals the natural log of t minus 1 and y equals 2t minus 1. Now, there are a couple of ways to do it, but I'm sure most of you guys love logarithms. So I'm going to take this equation over here on the right and write this in exponential form in order to isolate t. Right? Yes, I know I could isolate t over here and then go substitute that in over there, but then we still have these logarithms running around. And, and that would work. That would be okay. Right? But actually, this, this is going to look pretty nice. So the base is e. So e to the x is equal to t minus 1. And so t is equal to e to the x plus 1. Right? So substituting that in over here, you get y equals 2 times e to the x plus 1, and then minus 1. Notice I put the parentheses around because e to the x plus 1 is all going in for that t. And then when you simplify that up, you get y equals 2e to the x, and then plus 2 minus 1, so then plus 1. And that is your rectangular form of your equation from these two parametric equations. All right, so that's the introduction to parametric equations. Um, you should be able to graph uh, parametric equations and indicate the direction uh, of the curve. And you should be able to take parametric equations and find um, the rectangular equation uh, that goes with it. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.